Um, we are in our pre-session. Let's go around real fast and give uh, a roll call. No, you're just not yet. We're just first know. names here. It's oh, Shakita Yarbrough. Yeah. Aaron Rodriguez. Marsha Martin. John Peck. John McCoy. Susie Zaldaferi. Tim Waters. Carol Rodriguez. Danny Cedar. Don Quintana. Eugene May. Publix. Um, so let's go around really fast and give uh, board and commission updates. No, first of all, we're going to go with uh, Sandy Cedar. You, were, you wanted the first five minutes? Yeah, that's okay. Yep, that's absolutely okay. So uh, Valerie Dodd sent you this last week, um, and we've heard back from a few people. I just wanted to make sure yes comes up. Everyone's good. Does anyone have any things that we need to change up? And do you want to bring this back for a formal adoption at the next regular session? Um, I mean, I feel like. Uh, we're a bit late because we've been working on all these things uh, for a while. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just a written document. Uh, and nothing's changed from the nothing has changed from the one that yeah. you sent. Yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah I mean, I I thought it was an excellent capture of what we talked about mm -hmm. at the retreat. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, I thought that we had had good consensus at that time. Um, uh, I had a lot of improvements I wanted to make to the transportation picture because I felt like it started in the middle and ended in the middle with, without you know, a clear statement of objectives and stuff. Um, and I just got behind it and realized that today was the day that the comments were due. Um, so why can I have it at midnight? <laughs> yeah, of course. Me too. Yes, of course. Course. Absolutely. We just want to make sure that it reflects what you're talking about because mm -hmm. we will base communications and things yes. around this. I mean, I, I would agree with you, Marcia. In my mind, this is exactly what you talked about during your retreat. But we want to make sure that as we produce packages for you so that you can take to the public so that we post it, that it really is what, what you're looking for. Um, if you are talking about the picture, this is the transportation roadmap that's the yes. sustainability plan. Yes. So, and we've already approved that. I know a long well. time so yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. then, then, then. But future. <laughs> don't forget. Don't yeah, forget the future know. needs to be. That's right. Yeah. Don't we need to get right. more yes. serious. And a lot of stuff has happened since mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. that is not shown here. Yeah, I think that's true too. And will always be the case because we're always moving. Yeah. Well, hopefully, we are always moving forward to meet the goals. Yes, I mean. yeah. yes, part of yes, it. Yes, yes, we absolutely. <laughs> Part of the need for the timing issue is so as we go through the budget, mm -hmm. um, the budget lays up pretty long as this document. Yes, we so, are in the process of aligning the budget with this plan, so we want to make sure that in general, yes, mm -hmm. we're in the right direction, right? Yeah, so what you'll see is I'm creating the matrix of positions, and it's a little nuanced because things are hitting multiple categories. Mm -hmm. But I'm taking, well, we're going to find this position where it hits core work, but it also hit housing. And another position may hit core work, may not directly hit some of these things, but it actually hits your goal in terms of uh, when we look at the goal of people, mm -hmm. in terms of um, the children are most fortunate to be born, raised. And so things like that may be things related to rewind, which is really getting mm -hmm. at oh. issues. Mm -hmm. oh. So while it doesn't necessarily hit um, transportation, early childhood, or housing, it's hitting the core work that we're doing, but it's also hitting the aspirational goals. And so mm -hmm. we're working that out. So when you see the budget, you'll see things presented as it relates to this document. In addition, you do have to evaluate Carol's these goals next month. Right. <laughs> to, um, uh, another thing that I have concern about is is that we did discuss um, uh, looking at the approach to um, managing the street segment of, of the homeless population, the street living, and we were going to have a study session or, or a pre-session just going to be a study session right. um, on that, and um, it hasn't happened yet. 
does that mean that there's going to be no priorities in the budget in the 2024 budget to address that and we have to wait to 2025 because um some of the things that you know i think it uh, we were talking about getting feedback from the people from more street teams than just ours um and uh and we've got the the new boulder county efforts for soft detention and stuff like that that is really important and and uh, aligns with what their recommendations are um and and also aligns with the public's feelings which is miraculous that never happens um and so uh, i really feel like it would be important to get consensus about that at some time I do believe that's still scheduled. I know Christina was working on Yeah, I think we're shooting for September. Okay. Yeah, I don't feel like that's too far out. So that's all right. Right. It's right. too far out to affect the budget much. That's what I was. Well, budget has some funding already, right? I, mean, I think so. Part of it, we have the mental health funding too that I don't think we've tapped into that we're kind of holding to look at because mm -hmm. that's not, most, we're seeing the issues there in a lot of cases. I think there's overlap with that and the housing authority and other issues. Um, so I don't think we can think about that, Marsha. Okay. Yeah. And I feel your, your direction was to bring back a larger group of folks. I know Christina was working on that, trying to do that. Oh. Okay. Yeah, these aren't the only things we'll be doing. <laughs> well, well, there's, there's a lot of stuff in that core. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's exactly right. That core should be 90 plus percent of what we're doing, right? Yeah. I should probably keep my mouth shut because I'm not going to be in this conversation for long. But when I open this up and I see tasks and timelines tied to our, our priority list, I, I like that. And then I, I ask the question, so if this is going to be a council member, what do you need from council members? Because I see a lot of staff, or I see, I don't see it assigned to anybody, but I'm, I'm making assumptions. That's a staff task, a staff task, a staff task. Do you, do you need anything from council members to get this done? And if so, what is it? And yeah. why wouldn't that show up? And now it becomes a real work plan for, for a city council. Yeah. I, I think the first piece of it is making sure that if these are your priorities, understanding what other things are not the priority mm -hmm. um, And certainly, you know, a huge piece of your job is to approve the city budget. Mm -hmm. That's going to be aligned with this. And that's that's a role of the city council is to ensure that when you see the budget coming from Harold, that it is aligned with these priorities and, mm -hmm. that, and that you're supporting that. Um, and that as other things kind of come up, because other things always do come up, recognizing that, you know, keeping the eye on the ball is really the importance from our policy folks kind of pursuing. Do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, no, I think, so I think when we look at this, I think, A, what Sandy just said is, is the most important piece is keeping our eye on the ball, because um, it's always really tempting when we have document like this and people start bringing issues to us that we start oh let's do this let's do this let's do this and, and when we get into that mode what we actually start doing is building capacity mm -hmm. and it actually slows everything down yes. because we're not able to handle that so that's a piece of I think what we need you know when we talked about affordable and attainable housing and when we look at all the work that we're doing on housing I think the the other piece on that, which I think is the most critical piece from a council, is you know, if we're going to, you know, I've said this before, if we're going to be committed to this, we kind of need to do it because oftentimes, probably one of the most, um, what am I trying to say, one of the most difficult areas to deal with is affordable and attainable housing because we know that's going to create growth, we know that's going to change character in neighborhoods. I mean, we feel like and I think it's, you know, are we going to stay focused on this? Because as we connect it to the budget, when we look at, you know, I'll just tell you, you know, we have a million dollars annually that we put in for affordable housing. We will have another million dollars um, if you all approve it, at least today. Let me just preface that because we're still working through issues, you know, we would have moved up the attainable housing up to 600,000 and ongoing with 400,000 in one time again, trying to hit that million dollar goal and we have all these state dollars. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk a little bit about it in the housing authority meeting 
But you know, for us to go to the state and get this money, once you sign the agreement, you got got to go. Um, because if you don't, then they're putting some pretty hefty clawback provisions in it. So I think it's staying focused, being committed. You know, I think to your question, there are times where I don't think we know what we need until we bring something back to you. But going, here's where we need help. I think we need to do better at that. Yeah. Uh, you know, the first time, which was now five years ago, that I think Tim asked that question about, well, what part does the council play? And we ended up with a, a work plan that had things on it like council reading to children. Um, which is not really what that question means. The council is, it, it really is what areas of policy are insufficiently defined. Yes. So I can think of a good example. I was um, at, the, at the BIC meeting a week or so ago, and um, they, they were talking about, well, so what, we, what is implementing Vision Zero do? And Phil and Ben were there, and they said, well, we don't really know. We don't have a policy yet. We have to define it. And no, you have to implement it, Phil and Ben. The council should define it. And there are some priorities um, that, well, you know, so for example, bike path connectivity, right? When we tear up streets, we put a bike path on the new street but it may not connect to anything. They can be bridges to nowhere. So a policy change would be change the order of priority in which um, of the algorithm that decides when we do street maintenance. So that bike path connectivity, car, you know, bike head is a higher priority than it is now. And that's a policy decision. Okay, that's a really good point. And um, another thing is that I think the council needs to support each other. For example, if, and I asked him about the early childhood, I, I felt that maybe more of us should have gone to testify at the, with the Boulder County Commissioners uh, on the early childhood instead of just you showing up. Mm -hmm. And I feel the same way about uh, RTD. I don't want to carry the water. Mm -hmm. uh, we need more people screaming and yelling at them at their meetings and say, this isn't going to work, this is what we, because mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, Joe's here again. You know, mm -hmm. he's here. Uh, so anyway, uh, do you have what you need? I think this was good. I think so. The only yeah. other thing I was going to say is, you know, this is the city's priority. So, mm -hmm. so evangelizing that in your public meetings and in your discussions with the, with do you still know to send something to Valerie, or do you need to stay? Um, if you have changes, you know, by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow yes. morning. How, how, how late okay. do I stay up this morning? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's completely up to you, but so how tomorrow it? noon? You have any oh, that is, that's luxury. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any final wording changes? Do you want me to bring this back for, for official adoption, or is um, we've been working on it since we got that direction from Council at Richmond, but we didn't know whether you wanted us to bring it back for a follow up action. Do you have to? Let me hear yes or no. Do we think we need to adopt it formally at a council meeting? I would say yes. Okay. And, and make, I'm going to say it again take that graphic that got, and blow it up and post it someplace so we can turn to it and say, how does this square with this? Okay. Yeah. All right. Everybody agree with that? Yeah, I said yes. I use that laminated one all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. No, we could bring that back for formal adoption. You know, I do have a question. So, you know, our work plan, you know, we have listed the housing, these three components, yeah. where equity, safety, sustainability, I guess, you know, if an issue comes up that is in regard to, to equity, mm -hmm. I mean, it does have impacts on all of these. Is that something that then, because even though it's not stipulated on these down deep, but as things start to pop up, well, they, sorry. They tell me that. Yeah, and, so, and there are plans. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's not like there isn't a plan for equity and sustainability, right? You've seen a lot of that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So in the previous session, you all talked about equity. We talked about really, when we looked at this, we looked at core services, and, mm -hmm. and I think why we did the puzzle piece 
is equity, safety, and sustainability is really integrated in the core work that we do. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's how do we now start building that into the, the fabric of the organizational DNA. So mm -hmm. you all made a motion two budget cycles ago mm -hmm. in terms of our priority-based budgeting where equity is a component yes, of it. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's was really looking in there. there. And, yep. and so for example, yeah. on the transportation yeah. side, yeah. You know, I'll give you an example on the transportation side in the future of transportation in Vision Zero. Mm -hmm. You know, when we started looking at how we layer positions in that, you know, one of the things we realized is before we add an engineer, we actually need to add somebody into neighborhood services mm -hmm. because, and we need to add a planner because that's really the foundation of Vision Zero. So what mm -hmm. we're putting on is that equity lens mm -hmm. to try to go how are we engaging in that conversation? And it's not necessarily an engineer that can be first. Mm -hmm. So it, that's where you start seeing it really becoming mm -hmm. embedded operationally in what we do. Even to how we look at how we're spending money at parks, how is it distributed, how are we spending our transportation dollars? So that's really starting to just get integrated mm -hmm. into what we do daily. Everything we do should have should be having an eye towards an equity lens as well. Mm -hmm. as and we've always had very strong systems. Because in the end, when you have a fully equitable system, people from all walks of life will feel that impact. They'll, feel, they'll see the results. And so that's, you know, I think as we start moving along and, and we're hearing from constituents, hey, you know, you know, this car park or, you know, what if I'm thinking of places in Ward 3 that maybe are neglected or not, are kind of, Put off the radar. What what are we doing to kind of bring that back? Yeah. So I'll give you. I give you a real world examples. So we're looking at cameras. Mm -hmm. Carmen came in and said, "Hey, I have this money from the neighborhood improvement grant, and we need to look at how to put this in these parts because these parts are being impacted in this mm -hmm. way." So we start shifting real quick, mm -hmm. so that we can take our qualified census tracts and mm -hmm. then put money into those and balance it with others. Okay, thank you very much. There are two things, I'm gonna flip this agenda to the Board and Commission updates last because there are two things that um, I think that we need to really uh, talk about. And the first one is the minimum living wage and um, both commissioners, Levy and Lonchini, have talked to me twice this week and uh, Commissioner Lonchini said she was gonna be talking to all of you as well, I don't know if she is, but this, the, the conversation I had with Commissioner Levy today was interesting to me because she explained to me that the county was only asking for the very first part of this minimum wage. I haven't heard this before, which is the 1561 or 69 per hour increase. The rest of it is going to be a different conversation at a different time. Um, and um, the incremental increases in that I'm talking about with the $25 an hour <coughs> wage will be discussed in, in the future date. And I said, I never had heard that. So, and I had just talked to Marta on Friday about this, trying to get us to uh, put in an ordinance. I personally feel that um, they, they're not on the same page. And it's really difficult mm -hmm. to put in some kind of an ordinance when you don't know what you're talking about. Because that was not what I personally heard at the presentation they gave. And she said, oh, it was only the coalition that was pushing the incremental and it's up to $25 an hour. And I thought, I thought that's Lauren Fulbert mm -hmm. was that's not, that's from, that is not true, true. labor organization. So I texted uh, Aaron Brockett this afternoon and said, where is your council on this? He said, we are unclear and we will discuss it on the 24th. Um, but Commissioner Lorchmeen is sending a minimum and I, I emailed you to see if she gave, sent you that survey. She told, I said, send it to Sandy and also to uh, Scott Cook. Mm -hmm. um, but then I emailed her later this afternoon before the meeting and said, on second thought, send it to all of council. It's basically a survey on the minimum wage. I have no idea what it says. 
So I want to go around really fast and get everybody's view on this because Commissioner Levy also told me she wants an ordinance from the two highest employment centers in the county, which are Boulder and Longmont. And I said, I didn't say anything, but I thought, you know, you want us to make a law. Mm -hmm. I have a really hard time mm -hmm. to put an ordinance in on our employers telling them what they must do mm -hmm. at this point. Just so that's my opinion. Just to remind y'all, the current direction is for me to sit on the steering team with yes. other members of yeah. the consortium mm -hmm. and do community involvement as well as an economic analysis to bring back to you so that you have what you need for a 2025 potential implementation if you were to do that in the first place. Right. So that's just so you know, that's the current direction. I know the chambers have freaked out and they're sending surveys also right now um, about the county's um, Are they done? Yeah, well, they must have gotten it, but just FYI, Marta told me she has never seen you at one of those meetings. What? Is there what are they at the minimum wage meetings? At the consortium. Oh, oh that's no, that's true. no, it's no. supposed to be a different so according to the bill, before enacting a minimum wage okay, law, a local government shall consult with surrounding local governments and engage stakeholders, right, including Chamber of Commerce, small, large business. So we're supposed to be Having we were never group. in those meetings. And that's what the consortium of cities, which is made up of Longmont, Boulder, and Boulder County, that's yes. what the consortium is doing. You all gave me the direction to sit on that staff team, so I'm on both the community engagement as well as the overall staff team on behalf of the consortium. We are so can I, can I Yes, and yeah, you no. are our liaison. Go for it. Yeah. Sandy has been going to those and mm -hmm. talking. Okay. I had I even went to a chamber after hours just, just to, to ask. Uh, some questions of the chamber members and talk to them about it and say, what are your thoughts? Because we hadn't heard much from the chamber. They kind of gave it to their executive uh, council and then it just kind of sat there and chirping. Not due to the fact, the lack of Scott making an effort to, to really try and get them to give some sort of feedback. So that was there. Then I have spoken to uh, Ashley Stalsman and to uh, uh, Mark Lokman. They all seem to want to push the this through and I said I was concerned because I was throwing out this idea that maybe maybe it'd be better if we looked at things from the lens of of uh, if you had some sort of certification because it kept going it was never about this 15 60 or whatever dollar amount there it was about the, uh, getting to an incremental point in 2028 20, of $25 and I was like a lot of folks a little uncomfortable because I think sometimes we want to encourage people to get some sort of education and better themselves and that sort of thing. And, uh, and I know that uh, to operate certain equipment in certain uh, business settings, whether it is uh, a national standards or just the industry standard, they say, hey, to, to do the fryer at, at McDonald's, you have to be certified. To, uh, to be a teller, you have to have yearly training to, to, to make sure that you follow all the rules and regulations. Those types of certifications are what we're talking about uh, that uh, are great examples, but there's also first aid and CPR for it, uh, and, and babysitting training for people that are dealing with uh, uh, you know, uh, young children, daycare situations and other things like that. So, uh, but the comment I got from some members of the public when I talked to them uh, or how do you regulate that? So then that, that's a problem, but there is some aspects of this that says how you, you go about doing that. You know, and um, my feeling is, is that they're pushing hard, but I'm not quite certain. I think they've kind of put the cart before the horse a little bit. You don't bit. have the answers. And, and they just want some sort of reaction. And the thing is, is that I don't see a lot of movement, even if Lauren is pushing really hard over at Boulder, not seeing them jumping yeah, on it. And that's what Aaron said. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not, you know, in several conversations we've had, people are like, well, you know, it, it's a little awkward sort of question to ask people that, you know, are, I don't mean run businesses. I don't run a business. I don't want to assume that people are after the pandemic are prepared for that sort of situation uh, and everything. So, I'm, you know, it's a little concerned. And I'm trying to come up with active ways. Now they haven't said in the legislation that you know that certification part, part would be there, but I think it's really valid 
thing to think about because it also encourages people to better themselves. And it's not just saying 16 year old that's uh, answering phones or, or um, uh, being host or hostess at a restaurant is, you know, we want them to help support their families. And I see the importance, I know that. You know, I worked with that population for 10 years uh, while I was at Boulder Tech uh, teaching vocational uh, technology courses and things like that. So I, I understand that, but I do think that we still want to make sure that there's an education component and that, that there's a tie in there. Well, so can I, you all are aware, Sandy just told me and I just looked it up, are you all aware of the county's press release? Yes. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of questions I had about that. So, yeah, so they announced that they're going to raise the minimum wage in the unincorporated parts of the county beginning January 1st. Right. They're, they're creating an ordinance. And my question is, because we must follow the county, if they put an ordinance in for the county, we do not have to follow that, do we? Right. Okay, okay, great. Um, you are right, you don't have to. Okay, that's what I want to know. My other question is, should we put this on because they need an they want they don't need an answer they want an answer should we uh well harold and i talked about this last wednesday and i think if i understood you correctly harold that we would like a working group with some of the uh uh re local business people in our community both i always feel like scott cook is uh is the person who actually knows our local, not the corporate necessarily, but the local small businesses. We should have two or three of those people. And also maybe somebody from the LEDP type of like, like Smuckers or. Well, and Latino Chamber of Commerce. And and we businesses. really need to talk to people before we yeah. make a decision. So your, your existing, your direction to us to be part of the consortium, right. which is what we are. Right. But what you have in this, I think, in this decision is actually a split for the consortium and, and what's been talked about. Right. To include everybody that you mentioned mm -hmm. and have those conversations. And I think Sam is saying that starts tomorrow. Well. Tomorrow morning is our kickoff for the community engagement portion of the minimum wage discussion with the businesses and, Great. and everybody right. that you mentioned. So then I think at a council meeting that we should uh, make a decision so that it's public and everybody's involved in that and that message can go back to um, this county. Mm -hmm. You could absolutely entangle yeah, the whole just, thing yeah, and take 20 or do something else quicker. Yeah. It's completely your decision. We're just working off the existing okay. situation. And just to clarify, it's the labor organizations that want a $25 an hour. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that we, as the consortium staff group, have not even started the economic analysis. And that feels, that feels high yeah. to me. Yeah, that's well, for, for all of us, but, but I, I, yeah, I still have questions about how the county's action affects the state law that, that gives some people, uh, some alignments of cities or, or regions to band together and set a common minimum wage. I don't, they may have, they may have pulled the rug out from under us, and I think we need clarity on that from from somebody before we even start thinking. Um, the other thing that I would like to say about this, I had a really interesting conversation with with the um, one of our city interns who um, what's her, her, what's her name Kennedy, yeah, she work uh, she works at at. at uh, um, Bricks, right? And she's, she's, a, she's partial owner. She's a part owner of Bricks. And she said her mother is crazy over the idea of minimum wage. She just has written a zillion letters to Scott Cook saying, you've got to stop this. And uh, we talked about the, the data that you know, was presented most recently by the uh, AAUW that says the disturbances are short and then the economy improves for everybody. And uh, one thing I did was ask them to resurrect that presentation because we need to, now is the time to educate people. It wasn't as big an issue at the time. And what, what, was that 2019, Tim? Um, but 
you were on the panel. Um, it was in Harold Swindon. Yeah. Um, and uh, but the other thing is, uh, just as during the uh, pandemic, we gave small businesses some help in business planning so that they, because they most, most of them didn't even have business plans, you know, or had s such trivial ones that it didn't help them understand how to weather the storm. And uh, I think we need to start teaching people and maybe even figure out a financing plan for helping them get over the hump of a minimum wage increase. So um, basically, I want to know should we put this on an agenda before um, November? I'd like to do it before November, before the election, so that this council has the say in it as to put it on a council agenda so that we have a voice with a direct message to the Boulder County Commissioners. I yes, would, I would no. be in support of that, but I have a question for Sandy. You know, we have a livable wage here, 17. 40 an hour ish. Something like that. We've done it every year. Yeah. Based on and so, that. how is it that uh, we should be trailing? Uh, uh, there's this image or idea that uh, we're somehow trailing the, the county uh, in uh, being proactive and, and, uh, and, uh, and responsive to this idea. Our livable rate wage is only um, applicable to companies who do business with the city, not all businesses within the city. Oh, okay, just if you have some sort of contractual agreement with the city in some way, you know, selling them small widgets to make sure that, you know, for plumbing or whatever. Yes, we require that you pay a living wage. Where do you do that? Okay, so the other issue that came up um, with this, and I took it to Commissioner Lochini, uh, is that nonprofits, a lot of them get all of their money from grants, mm -hmm. and they make their budgets based upon how much money they're going to get from grants which affects their payroll. Mm -hmm. So uh, I said, are there going to be any exemptions in this for nonprofits? Because if they don't get their grants, chances are they're not going to be able to pay their uh, people. Um, I didn't like her comment at all. Um, and there won't be any exemptions. So there's a lot to discuss in this. And I, I don't think that. That kind of goes back to my whole point about the certification of some sort of thing, making it where there's some sort of logical tie-in to why somebody, you know, like our relationship with businesses, that we say this is what you have to have a minimum wage. Same thing goes to, to make it uh, sensible to the public, I think, would be like, okay, right, I have to have this guy, he's gotta be, uh, you know, uh, tips certified or whatever to, to do his job, we should be paying him or her a, 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 a wage that is comfortable. I have a problem with uh, government getting involved in businesses yeah, and, and in their hiring and what they pay. Uh, that's not our role at all. What they pay, I mean, as long as we have a minimum wage job, that's what well, I mean, but to, yeah. is involved. But to tell in them who in their employees should be paid what, based upon mm -hmm. certification, that's, that makes me nervous. Okay, is there, are there any more comments about this? Yes, yeah, I have a few questions. I mean, because I, I feel a little frustrated that they went ahead and moved forward. When I sat on the working room early before, um, moved to Councilmember McCoy, but on, um, you know, we were looking at having a regional approach because if one city's paying one amount for a minimum wage, another city's doing, we're competing with each other, and it it, it could negatively impact um, us and you know our municipalities. You know, so the fact that they're going ahead anyways in these unincorporated areas, it seemed to kind of go against what we in the working group had had all been came to a consensus on. Um, and then my understanding, you know, reading the bill and talking to, you know, because our, our um, CEA, the Colorado Education Association, is very invested in this, and there's been a lot of conversations about, about this piece. And one of the things was that the working group, I was under the impression that the stakeholder group was going to be the one that provides input on um, 
what that rate, incremental rate raise would be. So why are we setting, I don't even like the idea of us seeing numbers right now because it's supposed to be in the hands of the, all the stakeholders, our visit, our, um, our chamber of commerce, and what have you. The other thing is I would also like to know how many businesses, and I'm not, you know, um, I'm thinking more about especially our small businesses that are already paying their employees above minimum wage. So if we're already trying to set something, maybe they're already halfway there. So, yes, exactly. So I think, you know, by just going ahead and moving forward without having that information, we just don't have enough information to pursue. So I want to hear what this means. So all of these saying. comments, I think, are what we should be saying at the council meeting mm -hmm. to um, back up how you're going to vote. Mm -hmm. So um, just saying it right now to us, we need to say it to the public. Okay. And that's all I wanted to know is should we bring this yeah. forward uh, in, a, in, a ma in a timeline that that works for the commission so they don't mm -hmm. get our back. Yeah. <laughs> so, I would, so one more thing, I know I've already said a lot, but some of the suggestions being made here, I believe, are inconsistent with the state law and we have to, we, the consortiums, um, need to work within the framework of the state law. So I wonder if Sandy could give us um, a presentation and give a presentation before council um, because you know when the, the union people came with their thing, they, they didn't set that frame. Mm -hmm. And so if you could set that frame and sort of regularize the, the conversation and make sure that everybody has the same idea of what the council's prerogatives are and what the consortium's prerogatives are, um, that would probably calm things down because mm -hmm. uh, you know I think the, the union's uh, pretty aggressive proposal is kind of stirred things up. Well, you'll remember when we did have that presentation, I was a little surprised that that group was going to be there. I thought it was going to be Jeff Cahoon. Yeah, yeah. and he's the union guy. He yeah, was the and it was not. I did not like that group it was being there at all. Not. Yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't good. good. It was representing that. So, okay. so two, two things on this, just to close up here. The uh, the folks that I am speaking with from uh, the other communities like Erie and, mm -hmm. and they're, they are kind of, they're coming across in the way they have said things in kind of a, kind of a cold sort of not necessarily uh, confident sort of way to proceed with this. They feel like their communities would not be that much more uh, supportive of it than than what we're hearing here. The second thing is, is that I, I thought our interns were doing some surveys and everything, and so is that what you're talking about? Are we getting some information from them? So I released the, the intern information back out to the, our consortium, the, the small mm -hmm. staff partner. So they all interviewed, you remember, and they mm -hmm. yes. have some information. I've summarized that and sent that to our other partners in Boulder um, and in Boulder County, as well as to the working groups at this point. The economic group just started last week. That economic, um, uh, the economic impacts group, and so I sent them um, your feedback. Our community involvement one is tomorrow, so I have that feedback for them as well tomorrow. Um, the interns are done next week. They're, they finish their ninety hours in their projects, and they will present to you all really soon. Um, but it is the working teams now that will put out RFPs and actually try to get that information based on the feedback that we gave the intern and that the other. So right now we're on a track to bring you back information, um, preparing for a 2025 implementation if you made that decision in October of 24. So what I will do is I'll put this back on the agenda. I will lay out the process that we are currently in, as well as the commissioner's request for an earlier decision now for a 2024 implementation. I'll attach the information from your press release, um, and then you guys can, you all can decide how you want to move forward. Thank you. That would be great. It would be helpful if we're going to do this before election day. It would be helpful when something comes on the agenda. If we were clear on how we would finish the sentence, I will or we will seriously consider a minimum wage initiative when or if. Because how regional it is, what do we need to know from other commissioners, whether or not there are some set of standards, you know, or expectations, whatever that is. Because um, as I'm sitting here listening, 
uh, you know, you've got the county commissioner doing one thing, you've got a court system doing something else, you've got the labor council. In spite of what Jeff Galoon and his folks said, um, yeah, there, there's no evidence that they're working together, which right. is really, uh, some of the discussion. Yeah, yeah, that's what and, I found and, out. And, 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 and my comment that I was, could you set an example mm -hmm. for what working together looks like on this particular issue? It's just gone the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. But if, you're, if we're going to have something on that, I'll tell you, when I see it on the, the agenda, what will be in my head, what I'll be looking for is, what's the checklist or what's the continuum from acceptable to excellent or unacceptable to acceptable? On a, on a set of criteria. Okay. Um, level of, of uh, how, how much clarity is in the business community? How does that vary based on business size? Um, what do we, to what, to what degree on a scale of one to five, are other municipalities committed? Bing, 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 bing. Something like that. And if every municipality, if we can agree on that, it would be nice to put that in front of the commission or the labor council to say, you'll get decisions from us when you when you answer these questions. Until then, Go, go do your work. Go I think that's a great idea. And, and Tim, perhaps all of us should put down our questions and maybe um, give them to Sandy to make up a, a list of what it is we would like, um, not just answers to, but a, a working group has the working group. If so, there was a framework like that, yes. John, every, every mayor could take that to every council and say, look, that's right. You know, we, we've agreed on this or some approximation of it to hand back to folks, but we're not even going to waste our time right. on this okay. until you've done your work. And I got a call from Martha as well. And I thought, you know, if you're going to put together a survey, that we're, you know, one survey and common data based on what the survey is. But I said, unless there's a regional approach, I'm out. Well, they're trying to get the regional approach. I get that. By shoehorning this in. Yeah, and, you're uh, right. Yeah, I, I'm very nervous about so, that. And there I have that first summary from your first interviews. I'll send it out tonight. Perfect. Yeah. So can I ask right. a practical question on this? So oh, please. next <laughs> week we have um, executive sessions fairly linked, or you know, what does the agenda look like next week? It has that HPC appeal. Yeah, 22nd's pretty heavy. The 29th, yeah, budget and it's relatively light, but that's not designed for action because that's a study session. So we're going to introduce the budget. And then in September, we're in budget. Well, October, late October is fine with me. Okay. So you don't need to do that immediately for the commissioners. No, but you could also discuss it during a study session with your apparel director. Yeah. I mean, that's. The wish on their part doesn't mean that the numbers necessarily. So, um, thank you for listening and, and talking about this because it's really difficult getting something from one commissioner, something different from another commissioner. It's making me crazy. Well, and, and, and I think for you all, you can always say, here's the direction we gave staff. Okay. And the direction, I mean, what you all said. I think is the direction you've given us in public session to do all of these things. Right. You could say, well, we're staying to that direction, we'll bring it back in October if that's what you want to do. But I think what I've heard you all say is what we're doing. It, exactly. So is October a good timeline for the rest of you? Here? Sandy, I'm just going to chime in. It cannot be until probably October 24th. Oh. Just pointing that out. Because anticipated bone farm public yeah, hearing coming earlier. Yeah. Well, I'll do it right now to send you all the direction. Okay. That I have gotten from you last time, as well as the intern and report and summary. Um, we'll look at our budget calendar, and if there's a time that makes sense, yeah. we'll let you all know. I just we're in a study session. Maybe. 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 Is that going to be a, 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 a sugar 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 presentation? It's going to be next a week. No, but uh, something for the public. I next know week. Next week. Yeah, that's the other item that has. I was going to say, I think they've heard some. Yeah, and your interns are reporting at the beginning. I think it's on tomorrow. Okay. Oh, they do. Okay. And it's, it's on our time. So I want to go through the ethics really fast. Um, I had Don sent out a, I don't know if any of you read it, but, oh, okay. Um, I wanted to just 
give a brief summary of what we've talked about um, and where we're going to go. Next steps. So um, I'll just go over it really fast if you want. So it was about my meeting with Eugene and Carrie, the CAOs of, of Fort Collins and Longmont, and um, to the question of how many frivolous complaints that we had, did we have? I'm just, not we, I'm sorry, it was Fort Collins. Carrie said that in the 36 years they've had this in place, they've had 144 complaints, and only six of them were about counsel. 59 were advisory opinions, and 79 were other, which could be anything. Um, and they all went through the review board, which uh, carries out the screening process. And that I really want because our staff has been doing too much um, working with too many complaints about counsel, about other things, and they should not be involved because we are a self police council. So, um, and they had nine complaints from 2019 to 22. So there are not a lot of complaints and I think that we would probably be about the same. Um, first uh, ethics board in Fort Collins was made up of council members and the, the residents didn't like that. They said it was biased, couldn't be objective. So they, uh, their complaints are made by mail. Um, they have a review board that meets publicly um, and their council is uh, self-policing as well. Um, but so what we did was discuss what so what when we looked at other jurisdictions and Robert's rules and uh, accepted that basically we could only censure and take counselors off of boards and commissions. Um, if you disagree with any of this, I was just going to make a flipping joke about me taking off boards and commissions. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a self discussion. <laughs> No such luck. <laughs> and we discussed giving a 10 day window for the complaint to be addressed. This is very important to me mm -hmm. that whoever is being uh, accused of something, they have a right to be heard. So I, I did want to say that I know that the <coughs> drop down menu that you kind of proposed or whatever mm -hmm. were probably just really suggestions more than anything. It's all suggestions. But the fair campaign practices should be, I think, a separate. Okay. That covers both candidates who are not on council as well as yeah. council members who would be running for election. Okay, and I, you know, I want input on that. So I just think that should be a separate process. It already, it already is, you know, prescriptive mm -hmm. uh, penalties and things you know, like for that for, uh, for campaign okay. violations. I was um, just thinking about the top of my head. And censure and removal from boards and commissions, I think, is still just nothing more than a slap on the wrist. But, well, we if, can, that's, if that's what we're limited to, what we're limited to. I think we are, we can recall, we can, um, that's pretty heavy duty, and um, that would have to be a vote of council to do that rather than. Can the council vote to recall, or does it have to be a public decision? According to Robert's decision. rules, no. According to Robert's rules, and, and check it up to see if I'm uh, stating this correctly, that council can recall somebody on their own. They can put it for a vote of recall, too. Oh, it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I said, thank you. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. But I didn't put that in there. That would have to be something you would want to put in there. Mm -hmm. I'm just going soft here. Well, I think that there, there are some actions that could be in the drop down list. Mm -hmm. um, and they're specifically the ones from oh, the little red book of ethics. I can't remember what it was called. Mm -hmm. oh, but, um, uh, the chain of command violations is a good one. Um, I don't know. What that means. Chain of command is is doing things that are outside your purview. So if you are outside the council's purview, so for example, um, interfering with another government's process. What about interfering with operations? That too. That's also a chain of command. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so if, if, if I went to David Hornlocker and stood on the table and said, I'm going to make your life miserable if you do not do this about the electrification process, that would be a chain of command. Yeah, that action. would make me really mad as well. I'm writing these in, as you mentioned them. Yeah. 
Uh, and I think those are really the two chain of can two major of chain of command. Can anybody think of a third one? You have to like bullet point that under you know, interfering yeah. in a, a situation like like if you hit some sort of thing at a uh, like a police action in your neighborhood and you start coming in saying, I know this guy. Yeah, that would be changed for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, we need to decide who reading the complaints. Uh, remember, we talked about a board made up of a lawyer from another jurisdiction, a board of selected residents, or our own police review board. Um, so, if any other suggestions? That's all I remember that we had talked about. Let's see what else we have listed. Oh, um, and, and the important part for me right now is I had talked to three of you, and you were fine with me taking uh, parts of Fort Collins or the other ones that reflected what we talked about mm -hmm. and putting them together in a preliminary ethics draft that you, everybody looked at, you wordsmith, you edited, you added, you deleted, um, because we don't have a working document to work from. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, uh, is do you want me to do this, or do you want to continue to um, talk about it a lot more? No, I mean, if Fort Collins feels like they have a system that is working well, um, I think, you know, why are we create, recreating the wheel? Right, they're the ones that hired all the consultants. Yes, they are, and you know, I'm, I'm coming from the teacher mindset where we borrow from each other all the time. <laughs> so that's, that. I think that's fine for a starting point, but yes. I don't want to just adopt it without us. Oh, no no no, 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 That's yeah. what I said. I, mean, yeah, I know that's what you said. said. I'm not sure what that was, but please. Oh, okay. No, I mean, to, to start, to start, to start yeah. off with, and then, you know, of course, we're going to tweak it to meet our own needs. That's a completely different yeah. And then after we do that, I would go to Eugene, which is legal, and he would say, no, you can't do that. Are you kidding? That's a bit so long. Okay. So um, can I just, I want to know before we leave tonight, is that okay? That, and if anybody wants to work with me to, to put this draft together, please, please do. Um, but if not, I'm going to start working on that. Yay or nay? I just have more questions, and, I, and you know, and, I, and I'm, I'm not going to be in the mix. I know, but for me, the so white question is, is is one of the questions, yeah. and whether or not it's censure or whatever. I, I'm still hung up. I think that's an important question. I'm still on, on, on the on the on the what problem we're trying to solve. I, I I read the summary and the nine complaints about council members over a 40 year period of time, but there was no answer to a question about frivolous. We know nothing about those murder complaints, were they frivolous or not. And if not knowing that, it's hard to know whether or not that's a good use of a process that over 40 years you get nine complaints and, and, and it's well, I don't know if they're frivolous or, but let me just okay, go, go on. So I still am not clear on what problem we're trying to solve. I, 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 when I read the list, uh, the kind of starter list, and I realized I was off the top of your head, it did beg a question for me is, who's going to decide what's in the drop down menu? Is it us? Sure. Once I once I transition off, what I would say to you is, that's pretty arrogant. But you think you're the only ones who should identify what are, what are potential uh, ethical breaches? I'm a member of the public. I think I think the public has, will have a strong view on what should be on that drop down menu. So I think before we start building a list, we got to think about what the how credible will that list or the process be if the public has nothing to say? Well, about I didn't say that the public would have it. I'm, sorry. I'm just that's yeah. my question. Okay. Who would who would have who would have that? I, I, I did have a question as well. It got my attention that you can talk about three of us, right? And I don't mean to pick in a fight with this, but I but here was my reaction, Joe. Um, I'm not one of those three, so uh, who are those three? And I don't really doesn't matter. But how close does that come to being a rolling meeting? Well, it wasn't a rolling meeting. It was after our last ethics, before they left, they said, we would be fine if you just do this. It, it wasn't, I didn't call anybody and ask anybody. It wasn't a meeting. It was just like, 
I talked to them because they were in the meeting. That, but that begs a question about ethical, about ethical standards. You know, and I'm not making any accusations here. I'm just saying we have to be really careful about the approach and the language we use um, in what we're signaling to the community. That it's, if we're going to do that, it's more than a virtual, 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 virtue. It's more than a virtue signal. It is, you know, we're serious about this because we're clear of the problem. We're trying to solve it. This is how we're going to solve it. So that's, that's where I am on it. And I'm not, like no, I said, I'm I think not, you made a good point and what, and that's another point here. In the final thing before it's adopted, it has to go to the public. So that needs to be in here. It was a good suggestion. And I did not have a rolling meeting. Actually, it was Shakita, that's, that's fine. I'm just, I'm just, just as we were leaving, got, putting our stuff My, my point here is how important language is going to become. Okay. And, that's, and clarity is going to become once we set this up. Right? Yeah. Because because that that invites, well, wait a minute, what about this or what about that? And well, what you said, you said, what are we trying to solve? What I am trying to solve is having a tax on council without the councilor having any way of defending themselves or talking. To be shut down all the time when they want to speak about what they did or how it was interpreted. Um, that has to stop. It has to stop with bullying on council. It won't completely stop it, but there will be a process. If someone sees that this is not right, what's going on, they can go on the website and make a complaint about it. And um, this is about council. It's not about the city employees. It's not about dogs pooping in somebody's yard. Not those, those are frivolous complaints. So let's go back to what you said. This is about protecting council members. No, it's about allowing all council members to have a voice, due process. a due process for a complaint to be made. That even if a councilor has a complaint about someone on council, they need to go through the process. Yeah, I guess and never, have a review board. So I go back to the problem. I've never felt the need to be protected or defended by. Anybody. Well, I'm a public official. I knew what I was stepping into when I ran for election. And if I don't if, if if I don't want to be criticized or I feel like I somehow have to do battle with everybody who criticizes me, I'm in the wrong job. I I would have been for you know the last six years. So um, from everybody else's perspective, do you think we are on the I we're on the right path or not? Yes or no? I do think that clarity is very important. I do too. So I think being very specific as to um, what this will be solving, and, um, and if we pull the draft together and we all review it and, and look at it and, and making sure that it makes sense, um, I think that's important. And I know that when you said if, if we were okay, if I was okay with you putting the draft together and not have you doing the work, I'm like, sure. Um, so we can look at it and, and see. But um, at the same time, yes, I'm still fine with you, you know, uh, putting the draft together, but I do agree that clarity is very important and making sure that it's clear as to why this is needed. I agree and that to me that's why a working document is something that we can work with, tweak, add, delete, edit, wordsmith, all of it. But until we have that, there's nowhere to go into from my perspective. What do you think, uh, Aaron? I mean, as far as just working off of the four columns, these or your perspective on why you're asking for this? Well, it's not just when you're just four columns, it's, um, it was the other jurisdictions that I did that. People looked at or had the opportunity to look at the other jurisdictions that Eugene brought up, as well as um, the Roberts Rules of Order. I mean, having some sort of sample ordinance or something to look through it would be a lot more easy to guide a conversation and you can go back you all got those other jurisdictions ordinances or processes so you can go back and look and say this wasn't put in there or take You're this out about or whatever in march right yeah but eugene sent us three i think and then i got the one from fort collins so we had uh, Colorado Springs, Denver, or something else. 
Grand Junction. Grand Junction, you're right, and uh, that four cards. So four plus Robert's Rules Corner. Mm -hmm. So plus, uh, I guess as usual, I'd like to say that I feel like we're starting in the middle of the process because there is no definition of the standard to which uh, uh, council members should be held. And so how can we have a procedure for enforcement when, without knowing what we're supposed to enforce? So like a frivolous complaint would be uh, social media because it's been deemed by legal that that is free speech. So at some point we probably will be able to discuss that when the state and federal law approach that, but at this point. Well, my last comment would be until there's a greater clarity, I don't think, I don't think it's a good use of staff time. To be working with this, given oh, I don't want staff time to work on it at all. Well, there was a reference in there to task force or planning for the staff. Time. Oh, that's only if they wanted to. I'll give them the opportunity. Bill will say that in the end. So um, that's all I have. So yes or no? Do you want me to work on this? And if any of you want to help, that's great. If not. Yeah, I know. We're all busy. Yeah, I know. We're all busy. I think you should work on that and feel compassionate. Yeah. I think it's reasonable to do that. Yeah. Yes, um, Oh, yeah, you can work on it. I don't want to be involved in it. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's kind of what I thought from the last meeting. Okay, that's it. That's all I've got. We are going to do the LNG in the mail. Oh, so we are not doing updates? Remember last week? I wanted to bring it at the beginning. Yeah, go for it. Okay, you know what? Uh, there was one update that I really wanted to bring forward and add a recommendation from staff, and I'll put it back on staff because they told me to wait. Um, to bring it up during our update. And um, so I had, and I know, um, met with a neighborhood group um, with uh, Purdue. And it was really in relation to the issue of meth, meth houses. Mm -hmm. Houses that are just contaminated with meth. Destroyed. We have a mechanism to test. Um, one of the things that came up with, and in the meeting we had our um, um, the assistant um, DA, uh, Jeff Satter was there, we had another um, police staff. And really the, you know, and I'll just kind of make it short, is really what, the, what they're asking of us, and I think even police was, was um, in line with this, is really looking at what our ordinances, what, what do we have in place, what systems do we have in place that might be prohibiting or, or making it a little more challenging for police to go in and, um, or at least notify neighbors as far as safety. Um, is concerned. I think some of the things that they had mentioned was, uh, the, you know, the impacts to the neighborhood, not just property values, but you know, people, for their safety, um, the, um, they're, they're not notified mm -hmm. when a raid is until happening. Swat comes, until the SWAT team. Yes. Yeah. So if there, if we need to either it is operational, or is it something that that we need to be tweaking at in our ordinances. Um, so the, you know, the request was, well, one, one thing that they wanted to do was really bring in a task force, to create a task force with staff and neighborhoods. And what I suggested was possibly having a pre-session discussion on the, on the topic where police is involved, uh, and, you know, more police officers are involved, um, and give their input, what are the challenges they're seeing, what are some possible solutions that can um, come in here? I'm wondering if this should be an executive session because it's going to be in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it out, probably exec session because mm -hmm. there are certain reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and certain, certain things you don't context. disclose. Yes. Right. That is true. Okay, so that's like that. So I think mm -hmm. that would be a best use of the time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Ye
again, I can brainstorm and how, but I think there's operational safety issues that we're going to need to talk through because an example is, and you've seen this when things start rolling, you know, and you start moving and if you have someone that you know is dangerous, you don't want to notify a neighborhood that you don't necessarily want the neighborhood to tip the person off. Because that can happen, and or they can also receive. Yeah, I mean that's why that's you know there's a big kind of hubbub when we shift the radios. When we shift mm -hmm. the radios, people would have scanners mm -hmm. and can hear it. And so, yeah, I think if we, you know, I mean, if council wants to discuss it, we can probably mm -hmm. do an executive session discuss some things that are safety related and then maybe mm -hmm. spin off of it. Okay. Um, but yeah, there are some of the things that I think. Okay. I mean, council is just kind of like, I think it's a great idea. Okay. So, so this is something else impacting us also. That's really important. I just want to give a shout out to Molly uh, uh, because she came to the consortium. Uh, she provided me with information for the consortium of cities, and uh, the consortium of cities folks were just, she has been just such a Incredible powerhouse uh, working with them, so it was uh, great to see that. And I, I emailed her and said how wonderful she was, and let her know that they were just so appreciative of you of her and her guidance, uh, you know, her experience in passing along and sharing with you. I just want to say real fast that the uh, uh, transportation event fee idea is is getting some traction. Um, I talked to Senator Winters about it, and she said that it's definitely going to be in the list of uh, um, finances, fiscal finances and stuff for transportation in their discussion. Um, I'm meeting with uh, Senator Marchand on Zoom meeting on the 5th of September, um, and uh, Representative Jennifer Perante. Um, so they're all very interested because there's don't want to tax people for transportation if you don't have to. It's looking outside of the box. So that's it. That's all I have. Two-minute break. Two-minute break. Scott, you can ask me a second.